It's April 2020 during the lockdown because of the COVID-19 virus. And so a lot of people are looking in their lofts or getting out cars from their youth and trying to resurrect them, repair them and see what state they're in. And here's a typical example of uh, someone actually had uh, three demon speed controls which is pretty good going since I don't even have some of these speed controls in my own collection and uh, sent them to me to see if I can at least get them working. Um, I just have to point out when you resurrect your cars and get things like this working you shouldn't be putting in uh, high powered lipos or high powered uh, these are meant for brushed motors, brush motors because these were never designed for that in the day and in fact these are from about 1983 because if we look on the back it says Demon 2C 1982 Nick Adams issue C now the, all three of these are on the same circuit board but I used to make these in the day and do variations uh, this is the top one here it had forward and reverse and also a turbo for maximum forward speed which came in when you hit top speed and connected the motor directly to the battery bypassing any uh, losses in the transistors now these were made in 1982 as you could see or 83 and they have um, various uh, I used to keep um, the serial number and the date um, on them with the little stickers that these have now there's three different ones here this one has all three features uh, this one was a cheaper version which didn't have uh, the reverse here but it did have uh, turbo forward so and with, with brakes and there's another one here which looks like it is just um, forward and reverse without the turbo so you know a number of variations all on the same circuit board now as we've seen they originally came out in 1982 but I started making speed controls way way back in 1978 and uh, I can show you here the instruction sheet that I put out with it and right down the bottom here it says uh, issue 1978 and just read it and that was for the demon one the nearest one I've got it this to look like this Here's a beat up one. Uh, and this is actually has got uh, a serial number on it, a number 054. Well, not the first one. It's had all the wires and that chopped off. And it was uh, quite big, as you can see, came in the case. And it had this slot for hanging it on the body post on s some of the cars. I can show you another. Um, version of that in a car this one here this is a later one probably a two and these are so big as you can see compared to model speed control it was stuck in the back of the car like that and um, this is a Phil Greeno car <laughs> And that one came later so started off 1978 uh, then it progressed and I've got um, I've got an advert here from 19 September 1981 and shows a few variations you got the demon one demon two and a turbo unit which I developed which did the job of on this one here that turbo unit there was a separate add-on so uh, Demon 1 forward neutral brake Demon 2 forward neutral brake and reverse you see the cost in those days still 
well, I, I guess twenty nine ninety five, thirty nine ninety five. Uh, the turbo add on, and then you've got a Demon One B. These are for buggies. B for buggy. Uh, they had a they they had the heat sinks on them, and a two B. Uh, 1C and 2C so I was starting to make quite a few variations and that one was um, competition model of £45 so that was uh, day 81 but as I said these I started making them in 78 now those are some of the ones the early ones and these uh, about went on for some time, so from about 82 onwards. And um, before they, I developed them again. Now I do have some additional information on the speed controls as they develop. Someone sent me this ad. I didn't have it, but um, Martin sent it to me. 1987, uh, and it talks of other speed controls I was making them with. with Power Fets, the Demon King, Pro King, Fetish, Big Devil, I also did a Little Devil, um, 87. Now these ones, I uh, need a uh, fix in, have got uh, big power transistors in them, which weren't that powerful, but it's all you could get in the day. And it wasn't till much later that we could use FETs, which are the power fets. We now using all speed controls and things. Why was it much later? Well, I'll show you. I've got an ad here. It wasn't until, this is dated uh, July 1984, that they were speaking of the first power MOSFET that could be operated at logic level to drive it. And in fact, these big power fets were not available prior to about this date. That's why uh, we didn't use them until later on. And then you've got, obviously I started using them, this is dated 87, but as the power fets, they kept making them more powerful, but not that powerful. Now I do have some of my old speedos here if you're interested as well I don't have many but I've got a small collection here and for instance there is one with a whole row of power fets and still using a transistor for reverse because you could only get really the in-channel fets at that time that were powerful that and that one is a, a demon uh, king. That one, um, there's another one there. Let's have a look. They used to, I used to put them in heat shrink like that, that had less fets, and that's got a tiny little relay for reverse. And um, I, and I, that one has got a fet for brakes. Uh, there's um, one with the uh, so it still used a, a transistor for brakes, and this one was called. Um, that's a, I think that's a little, a little devil with the reverse. There, there, some more um, <laughs> a receiver, and um, there's another variation one there which had two, two re relays in it, reverse and a uh, power. Uh, turbo as well so I don't have a lot of I made speedos I didn't keep many of them and the size of the receiver that we used in the, those days 27 a.m. <laughs> was huge so and that was the sort of mini relay we I used after uh, we're using the big one originally using a, a very big power relay to handle the current and a smaller one that uh, snapped in for the turbo didn't have to be quite as powerful so I've got to service those three for somebody and th these are some of the ones I've collected some of them have got uh, serial numbers on them as still in little red stickers 
a lot of them fall off. Other stuff um, you may be interested over the years. Let me see what I've got here. Besides, um, I kept some of the uh, circuit diagrams, etc. Here's the Demon 2C dated uh, 1981. Demon 2C, C for competition. So that's my circuit diagram. I've got other circuit diagrams in here as I went along. The Big Devil, dated 1984, using the FETs and a bike control. In those days, the batteries, NICADs, didn't last the race duration. You had to be very careful on how you press the throttle and so bike control helps limit you throttle jamming and if, just in case you're interested i've uh, got a couple of other things i can show you here in the in this box i just keep them there's a pile of my old uh demon motors <laughs> that pile there and i've still got a lot of stickers um, all sorts of demon motors race motors uh, BRCA legal ones, um, modified race motors. Uh, I've got others as well. This, uh, uh, there's the one with the red end bell, which wasn't too successful. So when you crashed, the end bell used to get ripped off. 25 turn. They tend to have the returns written on the outside. 24 turns. Made so many variations. Quad wind. <laughs> 21 turn and um, these are all the red stickered ones weirdly I don't have a Mr. T which is uh, quite collectible I, I tended to give these away over the years until there's not many left got a lot of stickers uh, uh, there was a gold st prismatic sticker and then I used various colour stickers on various uh, ones as well. well there was a lot of motors around and you can still get find them on eBay so that is the a little bit of the history not a lot of the speed controls and uh, demon speed controls uh, were pretty successful in the day now here's a report from model cars uh, 1983 uh, Eurochamps and uh, on this chart here it shows the A finalists and the speed controls they were using on this chart here it tells you the people in the final and it tells you the speed controls that they used from uh, Mickey Booth Demon 2CE uh, Nigel Hale, Demon 2CE, James, uh, Jimmy Davison, it was Demon 2C, and uh, and um, Tony Wells, Demon 2C, uh, Wayne Davis, Demon 2C. So it was pretty successful in the day. Also, I noticed that uh, top diver is Wayne Davis. Well, with 30 laps he's using the demon speedo um shows the result as andy dobson winning but i'm not sure if it was andy or mickey booth that won there was some sort of uh, disqualification or lap of penalty so what's going to need repairing on these for the customer well um this one the most simple one uh forward and turbo uh normally the Transistors, the power transistors can burn out. It's pretty obvious to see when they burn out because this, these plastic screws melt and then you get solder poking out of them. They look all right. This one hasn't got any wires on it for some reason. Uh, so that probably work once it's um, some wires put on it. There's two wires obviously, obviously go after the brush motor, two to the battery and a receiver lead. This 
these two have got um, these little mini plugs that uh, I never used myself, so I, I think they look fairly recent that you must have bought. Um, again, the transistors look right, the relays, you can, these are see through, you can normally see if the contacts have welded, and they also grow a pip on them, uh, which tends to short out eventually. Um, and it looks uh, reasonable. And this this one with all the relays and everything, um, it's uh, the diode that was there is broken, um, maybe by impact. And the transistor here, the screw, the nut has melted. I mean, they can get very very hot and still continue working, but the transistor might have gone. And uh, I'll check, it's got this um, bypass wire here, which was the circuit that put out 6 volts from the 7.2 volts or whatever input has been bypassed. So they've been taken out, wasn't it, but they originally, I don't know. So it's just a matter of connecting them up. And I'm testing them with a brushed motor, obviously. I say, uh, here's another demon power motor. I don't know what wine this is, but um, it's, you can use something like that. And and uh, you don't have to use a NICAD to test it, but don't obviously put um, a load on the motor when I'm testing it. I measure the current, etc, etc. Just repairing these three speed controls, I suddenly realised why two of them were, were uh, blown. Um, they had these connectors have been put on by someone. They've been marked battery and motor, and I suddenly realised I've uh, taken them off now. But they'd marked them up wrong. There are four wires come out, and they're bunched close together, and it's not really clear uh, which one is which if you've taken the connectors off. And they, did, in fact, uh, put the motor connection on the battery wires and the battery one on the motor connections. Um, the wrong way around. So when they connected it up, unfortunately, it blew out a couple of components. Anyway, I've replaced all the wires, and it's quite difficult replacing the wires on these speedos because they were never meant uh, for the high current wires we have now, like the 12 gauge. Um, and so the holes that you have to solder them into are close together, and they're not very uh, large. You can't put large wires in. So I've, I've managed to put uh, these in on all of them, uh, nice uh, little black wires, and I've marked them up with colour codes. Hopefully they won't connect up wrong. I've also had to connect uh, the receiver wires on two of them were missing, and repair the various components, uh, some blown diodes, etc. Um, and we get in there. Uh, this one had the power transistor blown out, the BD250A, which goes in there. Now I did go through some some of my old stuff and found this um, large uh, box full, and it was marked uh, BD250, uh, of, um, in fact these are TIP 36As, which were the same really as BD250. In fact, that's a that, that one's a BD250. You probably can't see it. Um, and these are the other version, the, the BD249s uh, or the 35As. So I've still got quite a few of those that um, I can put in. You can see this. The heat sinks are slightly different from different manufacturers. Square one, round one. So I can put one in, in there where it's blown. So we've still got quite a, f a few of those left over for after all these years from the late 80s, beginning of the 90s. Uh, here's a, a Demon BD2DH. It says here, Demon 2DH, Nick, 1980. Uh, Nick Adams 
Uh, this one obviously has blown out the transistor as well. Uh, two relays, one for reverse, one for forward maximum power, which took the power instead of passing it through the transistor. And the other transistor was for brakes. And um, someone pointed out to me I did go to try and get more powerful brakes and reverse because the same transistor is used for forward and reverse. And I had I did double them up. Uh, in fact, here's a doubled up one. Uh, put in two in parallel. Uh, the 36A these are. And uh, jamming them in, in the space like that. It gave it a bit more power for brakes and reverse. So that's the 2DH. Uh, which was pretty successful in buggies. Um, and then I've got... Uh, I've, did discover a few other things. <laughs> I discovered this big stack of uh, proking boards, <laughs> which I obviously, oops, ended up not using. And it says on here, Demon Proking copyright 986 Nick. Uh, it's the one with the multiple fets going down. Uh, pretty successful, it worked pretty well that did, um, and I then went on to change it to all sorts of other versions, devils, big devils, little devils, for 12th, etc. So uh, quite a stack, <laughs> and I did find the um, circuit diagram here for the proking that I originally had. Now, it shows the eight FETs as the RFP15N05L originally. Now, as I said earlier, uh, FETs were in early development in those days, and you had to take what you could get. And these were only rated at 15 amps, and uh, <laughs> which is tiny compared to what you have these days. But it was all that was available at the time. That's why they were par paralleled up, to give you the power. They also required... Uh, some decent voltage to turn them fully on so add a voltage double a circuit here uh, later on you didn't need that with, as the FETs got better and in fact um, this uh, is dated 1986 but as I, I used this and kept on making them up into the 90s and in fact I still got my purchase uh, my purchase book here starting in 89 and it showed that I did change the FETs here uh, to um, the BUK 455-60 amp ones later on and prior to that I was using here we are Buzz 11s I was buying and then I started buying the BUK 455-68s which are around about 40 Perhaps those were 60 amps. Buzz 11s were about 40 odd amps. So a massive improvement over the original ones and would handle more current without heating up. So that's um, a bit of history on the Demon Pro King. I'm just going to finish these off and uh, test them and uh, I can also, perhaps I'll repair this one as well. <laughs> I'm sure the rest of it's okay. Very little went, goes wrong with these. Uh, they burn out the transistors because obviously they get a lot of hammering, just one transistor handling a lot of current used to get quite hot. And they were basically the only things went wrong. And if they were used a lot, the relays, the contacts used to burn up eventually. But uh, most of the other circuit uh, gave no trouble at all unless they ripped the wires off or we've connected it up back to front or did something. Uh, they were pretty reliable. Large, of course, compared to these days. But we were working with what you could get at the time. Got the three speed controls uh, fully repaired now. Um, I'm going to test them on the bench um, with a power supply here. Uh, it's limited to 2 amps uh, and I can adjust the voltage and also 
it makes sure that if there's a short circuit I don't burn them out if I just connect them straight up to a NICAD or LiPo and so uh, we can do them one at a time I can just uh, take the simplest one here which is the forward and turbo they've got all the new wires now normally you test with a, a transmitter and receiver but I've got a servo tester here which is a bit simpler to use and um, so all I have to do is plug it into there and I'll collect up the positive and negative it doesn't need to be connected to a motor just yet though I do have I do have a little a tiny little Mabuchi 280 which doesn't draw much current less than 2 amps I hope which I can use to test uh, this power supply is very old 2 amps is pretty poor these days but uh, it does the job for most things that I want to test on the bench with these speed controls there are two adjustments there's one for the neutral point when you've got your transmitter set at neutral um, and then there's one for the high point which means when you push the throttle fully up uh, the relay operates and in the case of the reverse the reverse operates and you can adjust that because in the olden days the transmitters didn't really have uh, any adjustments so uh, you have to be able to adjust it on the speed control now it can be quite difficult uh, if you don't have the motor connected but you can hear the relay operate but first of all I want to make sure with the power supply that I don't have uh, too much current uh, I set it about an amp is enough uh, about 7.5 volts and um, I've connected it up I haven't connected the motor up it's not necessary I can read the voltage on the coming out of the receiver to make sure that this one this one's got an actual voltage regulator uh, which regulates it to six volts so the other two didn't have it and a lot of times uh, people didn't use it this used a diode in, in place of this regulator so we turn this on and uh, on the servo setting you've got the neutral position and then you've got the uh, like brake and throttle now it can be a bit of fill you have to listen to the relay operate if you don't have any voltmeter or something on it okay, up here we've got the voltage and the current and so if I turn this I can actually hear the relay operate as I turn this to one position clicks there clicks off and uh, when it goes to brakes now this uh, draw, draws some current into the tran brake transistor uh, which heats up a resistor underneath you can actually see the current draw if you go to brake uh, going up a lot and in this case it's over half an amp and the voltage has started to drop so but you can set the neutral now if it was way off you'd have to adjust these two parts but I've already done this one and adjusted it so uh, we've got forward click on click off and brakes we've got the motor here I'm stuck it on a, a bit of blue tack stop it flying around so if I turn on okay now as I advance the pot uh, the motor stood up it does let's set the current up and when I hit the turbo position it should go the rev should go up a bit more there turbo off on neutral and I can show the brakes if I do it quickly so full forward brake so the brakes are working as well so that one's good going to test the one with forward and reverse is one that's most likely uh, be difficult to set up uh, so I've got to adjust the neutral and the game point to get the both relays operating one in, in forward turbo and one when you've got full brake position to get the reverse to come on uh, turn on 
You might be able to see or at least hear the relays operate. That seems to be all good. So all I have to do is I'll turn up the current limiting and I'll connect the motor, see what we got from the motor. So we can go from full forward to brake and then it'll go into reverse. You should be able to get partial brakes without reverse. And then reverse. And that's all good. So that one's working fine. Just test this um, one here. It's the forward with turbo relay, a big turbo relay laid flat to give a slightly lower profile in those days. It made a slight difference in some cars not to have the higher relay there. I think I've already set up the neutral on this one, so I've connected the motor. Brakes forward, brakes. It's sensitive, so I can I can adjust that. So that's fine. So I've got the uh, three speedos here. I'm just going to test them on a on a larger brushed demon motor, old one here. And I've got a really old Demon uh, LiPo from years ago, uh, 5000 milliamps, 20C. That was a Dean's connection, so I'll be able to uh, easily connect it up using some crocodile clips on all the wires. I'll use the uh, servo tester initially, so I do have an old radio here, uh, which was from about the era. Um, and a 27 AM receiver somewhere. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing, which I can use. I mean, if we're going to have a historic, I might as well make sure it works with the original historic sort of stuff. So I've got it connected up, being careful not to short anything out, obviously. Uh, motor. I put the motor on that pad, stop it bouncing around, and we just check see if it works. Give it a bit of throttle. That's part throttle and turbo should operate. There's a lot of sparking from the motor causing some interference. Brake. That motor's probably not been run for a while. It probably needs some new brushes, let alone the commentator burnt away. Uh, so that's why you get a bit of chattering on the relay due to the interference. But it's working. It's working okay. Let's test the next one. This is the white turbo. That one's working really nice and smooth. I might have had the motor going the wrong way round on the other one, so uh, just forward brakes. So that's fine. Got the one with reverse set up, so the forward intermediate speed, then the relay comes in there. And reverse. So forward and brake. And reverse. So that's uh, good. 
And a final test, I'll just do it on this one with the radio, 27 AM, <laughs> big old receiver, the uh, servo connected up as well. So, so it works with the radio and I'm sure the others work exactly the same. Now one final thing I can do is that the originals came in some heat shrink and luckily I have a real of this black heat shrink that I used to use so I've I cut some up so I put the heat shrink on and this is how they would have been when they were new Back in 1983 or whatever, um, the wires would have been different, that's all. But they would have come in this black heat shrink like that, uh, with a couple of little flaps uh, just cut out. So you can get to the pots if, to adjust them. And there are the other three that I fixed. And uh, that is the original circuit diagram from uh, 1981 issue A for the Demon 2C version uh, with the reverse option they're still being used after all these years <laughs> in iconic cars and people refurbishing their cars from uh, many years ago they mustn't be used with modern high power motors you should only use them with motors from the era like um, like the one I did the testing with and, and other similar uh, brushed motors and just don't go mad with them otherwise they won't take it